I finally got back to making uh, YouTube videos for my channel. Now, I haven't made any for about four weeks, so this is the longest period of time I've gone without making a video for my channel. Now, there's nothing and no reason in particular other than I've just been busy with other things. Uh, for example, I've been working through uh, Visual Differential Geometry and Forms by Tristram Needham, and I'm about halfway through that book. And whenever I finish it, I'll go through um, a book review of it because it's quite brilliant. Uh, so that's what I've been doing, and uh, it's an excellent book if you're into uh, differential geometry, that is. Uh, but I've now worked through this course, uh, worked through the, the design of the add and subtractor. It's completely finished. I've got all of the special cases and all of the edge conditions completed. Now, I don't, I'm not saying it's a 100% correct. I can't because I haven't gone through any kind of full testing of it but I'm hoping it's uh, there and thereabouts. But I will work through a test script as part of the uh, final video, uh, final videos on the course. Uh, so the setup that we have here is the same as the setup I produced for the multiplier. Now I want to try and keep it uh, as much, as similar as I possibly can because we're going to join these together and they have to talk to one another and we have to be able to create a, a full floating point unit. Now one thing to say here is that this is a kind of halfway house. Uh, it's not the type of design that you would have used say for an actual floating point unit that you could design say in CMOS. Okay but it is a, a, a nice halfway house between the mathematics of the floating of floating point numbers and the actual realization in silicon. So we're getting a, a method of uh, really increasing our comprehension and cementing our understanding of the architecture for a floating point unit. So I've kept it so that the architecture would look like the kind of architecture you would have within a floating point unit. But within each of the blocks, we've used the kind of primitives that we have for Logisim in order to make it the actual uh, uh, design as easy as we possibly can. But what we will do, and again this is next year or even possibly the year after, is that we will uh, take the design and we will produce the, the full floating point unit just by joining these different units together. Uh, but then we will head on and I'll pick, uh, for example, a, a, a simplified fused multiply add architecture for an actual floating point unit and we'll try and design something that is actually realisable in, say, CMOS and that it could be then uh, farmed into, a, a, into silicon. But again, that's, that's a way in the future. All we've got here so far is a, a three courses the floating point unit numbers, and we've got the multiplier, and we've got the adder and subtractor. So the multiplier, again, it looks just the same type of setup. So this is the setup here, and we've got the same type of uh, uh, design, okay? So let's have a quick look at the design that we have here. Now, I'm actually working through the course at the moment. I, I have about five or six videos together, but I've decided to redo the videos because they're just a little bit too long. And to be honest with you, um, it's the type of subject matter that uh, you either you have to be into it in a big way or you um, to learn it, I think you want to be able to build something for yourself. If you're just learning the mathematics and then she's trying to apply that to the circuitry in a book form, I think it's, one, it's quite difficult, and two, um, uh, you'll have difficulty actually finding uh, uh, some decent books there that will describe it in a, in a simplified manner. Um, there's plenty of stuff out there if you want to uh, do you know a, a really really detailed uh, look at floating point units but it's 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 kind of difficult you know and it's the kind of stuff that you would pick up in a if you were doing a, um, a say a master's or some work on, on say PhD work uh, but if you're kind of layman and you're just trying to get an, a comprehension of it 
it's difficult to find the the um the, the stuff out there um but anyway that's a ramble uh, what we have here uh, is a dual path architecture so i'll get rid of my image here just to talk my way through it now as i say we've got the course together I'm, I'm putting the course together in fact this video is as a and a kind of kick up the bum or an impetus to get me started so i'll start the the courses proper today uh the course videos so we've got the input here x and y goes through a splitter and it splits it into the sine exponent and mantissa for the x and sine exponent and mantissa for the y we then put these into uh, an exponent difference so we work out the difference between the, the x exponent and the y and we then swap the values depending on whether x is greater than or less than y now we've got two paths here we've got a near path and a far path now the near path covers uh, any exponent difference which is less than two and is also a subtraction so it's anything that, that is creates a, it's what's called a cancellation so we'll get through a can this stuff whenever we do the course so uh, this is the cancellation side here and on the other side it's all the values which are greater than 2 so there's no cancellation uh, within this side here. Now we're going to uh, add on the uh, 24th bit here so this is the bit extension and uh, the 24th bit will either be a 1 or a 0 depending on where the input is a normal or subnormal number and down this left hand side we do a one bit shift which will be described within the uh, the videos and we're going to have a work out whether the one mantis is bigger or smaller than another and we've got a leading zero count and a shift which really performs a partly a normalization in this this side here and this generates the leading zero count we then join the exponent the mantis and the sign together and it goes down through uh, this path here, goes through the rounding section and then it heads back out. We get the final result down here. Now on the far side, we've got a shifter. We've got the add and subtract. We also start working through the rounding here by producing a sticky bit on this uh, uh, far side. And now we go through a normalization unit. And again, we join them together, exponent mantis and the sign. And then we have a choice between both paths depending on the exponent difference down through the rounding and, and finally out here so that's a, a very uh, quick cursory uh, look at it now one other thing to mention that i did do here and i did it, the same thing in the multiplication as i i uh, a bit extended the exponent so the exponent comes in as an 8 bit but i've extended it to 9 bits and that makes it a lot simpler for us to uh, then go ahead and work out whether the result's going to be a, a normal subnormal whether it's been an overflow or an underflow so that's all there is really for this I'll, I'll knock down into a couple of these just to see just to show you some what sort of complexity we've got in them so that's the splitter there head back up and we've got the exponent difference in the swap and we've also got this test for subnormal. I've put some notes in each of the uh, designs as well. So whenever I work through the actual course, it makes it a little bit simpler. And we've got, say, I mean, the most complicated section, probably the, the normalization, normalization down here. And also uh, something that tends to take a bit of time is doing the special cases. So these are the special cases here. Okay, so we've got comparators and we've got our test, we've got our multiplex. But again, this circuit here is very similar to the setup I, I created for the multiplier. Okay, so um, it's much the same sort, sort of uh, setup. So in order to create all of this and get it working, now I'll show you actually working. What we can do is we can put in any 8-bit uh, uh, hexadecimal number. So then put can get put in here so there's a hexadecimal number okay some random number and here's another random hexadecimal number uh, okay and you can see here that we're going to have a normal uh, plus a normal and it's going to give us a normal result and there's the input the normal 
the normal and giving us a normal result here. And you can see here that it's a, there's no other flags here being raised, okay? So you could make it so that possibly you might get a, a non-exact flag. There you go. So that instance there, there has been a rounding occurred and the answer is a non-exact answer. I created a model of the adder and subtractor in Excel VBA. So you can think about the process here as going from the mathematics of the floating point numbers and then modeling that within Excel VBA. And from the understanding of that model, I picked out a particular architecture for the adder and subtractor, which was the uh, dual path architecture. And then I was able to build the dual path architecture in the in Logisim. So that's just part of the way there. What we want to be able to do, obviously, is uh, build an actual architecture that you would see in CMOS and possibly try an implementation in uh, one of the uh, tools that I've got. I've got a CMOS design course and we could potentially try and uh, model or create the actual CMOS design in that. But that's something for the future. Uh, now, I'll just quickly go through this because you've seen it in, probably in previous videos. So we've got the add and subtract. Now, if I double click on it, we're going to bring up the interface here and it allows us to uh, add and subtract uh, different numbers, OK? And you also get the answer in hexadecimal here as well. And you can go through the subtraction. So this here I've used to help me model the uh, actual uh, add and subtract process. And it would have been, a, it's been invaluable. Uh, and I wouldn't have been able to do the design without having first worked through it in Excel VBA. Uh, so we're obviously going to have that. And again, we had a few extras that had, we had to, I had to add in. Uh, for example, when I worked through the special cases, I had to go through some systematic process for generating all of the special cases uh, and also generating the uh, values that would create a normal result or an overflow or underflow or subnormal uh, result. So there's a few extras in here as well. So that's enough really um, for uh, this video. Uh, my image is a wee bit dark here, isn't it? But it's not too bad. That's enough for this video and I'll start today and I'll get into the course proper and start creating all of the videos that I need to create. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.